Okay. It's still officially Thanksgiving week. <laughs> We're going to talk about Thanksgiving. I didn't do that this past Sunday, so it's legal to do it today. <laughs> but I had a something I wanted y'all to share with y'all and read. I did this three years ago on Thanksgiving. And I thought it would be worthwhile to share it again. It tells us how our government started on the right note, George Washington Day. But moreover, I've entitled our message this morning, We Have Much to Be Thankful For. Much. As bleak as Sometimes things may seem and may appear, never forget who oversees all things, and that's our Lord. Uh, but in the, the book of Psalms, the 92nd Psalm, we're going to read the first five verses. Then I want to share with you the Thanksgiving proclamation by George Washington. Okay, the psalmist, first of all, the Lord told us to give thanks unto him on a regular basis, and that's, that's what counts. Our government recognized that when they, uh, the proclamation that I'm going to read to you in a moment. But let's read beginning with verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning, and thy faithfulness every night, upon an instrument of ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp with a solemn sound. For thy, O Lord, our Lord, thou hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and, that, and the thought, thy thoughts are very deep. But Thanksgiving was originally set, uh, of course, by God, but our government endorsed a period of Thanksgiving. Our forefathers did. And they gave thanks for their freedom and the material blessings which they had. And folk in 17 and 89, they had very little compared to what people have today. But let's begin with uh, reading the Thanksgiving proclamation by George Washington. It begins, whereas it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey His will, to be grateful for His benefits, and humbly to implore His protection and favor. And whereas both houses of Congress, isn't that something? have by their joint committee requested me to recommend to the people of the United States a day of public thanksgiving and prayer to be observed by acknowledging with grateful hearts the many signal favors of Almighty God, especially by affording them an opportunity peaceably to establish a form of government for their safety and happiness. Now, therefore, I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day of November, next to be devoted by the people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being, and you notice the word being capitalized, meaning it, uh, speaking of God, who is a beneficent author of all that was, was and that is or that will be. And let's read that from being, again, again, the being who is beneficent, author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be. 
that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence, which we experienced in the course and conclusion of the late war, for the great degree of tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have, have since enjoyed, for the peaceable and rational manner in which we have been able, have been enabled to established constitutions of government for our safety and happiness, and particularly the national one now lately instituted, for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed, the means which we have acquiring and diffusing useful knowledge, and in general for all the great and various favors which he, meaning God, hath been pleased to confer upon us. And also that we may then unite in most humbly offerings our prayers and supplications to the great Lord and ruler of nations and beseech him to pardon our national and other transgressions to enable us all, whether in public or in private stations, to perform our several and relative duties properly and punctually to render our national government a blessing to all the people by constantly being a government of wise, just, and constitutional laws, discreetly and faithfully executed and obeyed, to protect and guide all sovereigns and nations, especially such as have shown kindness unto us, and to bless them with good government, peace, and concord, to promote the knowledge and practice of true religion and virtue, and the increase of science among them and us, and generally to grant unto all mankind such a degree of temporal prosperity as he alone knows to be best. Given under my hand at the city of New York the third day of October in the year of our Lord, 1789, George Washington. They believe the good book, didn't they? They believe the Bible. And they believe in giving God the praise and glory and honor due Him. It would be great if our government would reflect back on what Thanksgiving was set up for and as. But we're talking about this morning what all we have to be thankful for. And folk, that's meant that much. But let's begin with the most important. The most important possession that one can have is our salvation. Salvation of the eternal soul. What it cost us not a free salvation. Now there was a great price paid. Never forget that price. The Lord Jesus Christ freely gave his life. Freely. He said himself, they don't take my life from me, but I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I have power to take it up again. They mocked our Lord on the cross, and they said he saved, me. He saved others and, and, and so forth, but he can't save himself. And he said he could have called legion of angels. But had he done that, his blood would not have been shed for your sins and mine. So 
he said to the Father, let thy will be done. When he went to that cross and paid it all. Folks, he didn't pay part of our sins. He paid for all of them. That old song we sing, Jesus paid it all, all to him we owe. Sin hath left a crimson stain, and he makes us white as snow. That's still true. But the worth of salvation is immeasurable. There's nothing comparable to eternal life. It embraces forever. Amen. Everything, as uh, George Washington put in his declaration or proclamation, everything that's good that was, that is, or that will be, and I'm quoting from the, his proclamation, for I didn't underline. But eternal life, where death has no entrance, hath no power, because it's the last enemy that the Lord's going to put down, the enemy of death. And folks, it's a common enemy. Physical life, the Lord gives us. Without life, there'd be no need of salvation. Without salvation, life would be in vain. Life, I remind you, is a gift from God. Any of y'all ask to be born? Of course not. But God gave you that precious thing called life. As the book of Job said, he giveth and he takes away. But he gives us a better life, doesn't he? Look at We can't grasp how wonderful a gift that God has blessed us with. But life being a gift, uh, I look back at verse 2. It says, To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. The Lord watches us morning and night, doesn't he? But life being a precious thing, sometimes we abuse it, don't we? Like a toy. We have a friend we buried last year, a lady, smoked all the time. If y'all do that, preacher talking about smoking, yeah, I'm talking about smoking. One of the worst things that you can do to your body, and folks, it's God that gave you that good health, don't destroy it, don't abuse it. But our friend that I mentioned, we'd have breakfast down at Mighty Burger, and we'd have to wait because she had to step outside, and sit down, and abuse her body. She paid the ultimate price. But I'm saying, folks, we don't have to do something like that. God gave us life and he expects us to treasure what we have. So when you consider all that the Lord done, it's much. Another thing some people take lightly is church membership. 
But my Bible tells me that the Lord has a bride. And that bride is made up of his church. He's going to receive us like a wedding where the groom receives the bride. We're chosen vessels to carry on his work on this earth. We can, can become giants or we can be a dwarf spiritually. Another thing I want to mention is when we count our blessings, especially our families, our families are from the Lord. Went over, Linda and I did Tuesday and visited with my brother. Y'all know he had a stroke. His speech is impaired. It was kind of sad. Uh, his wife has Parkinson's disease and she's shaped like this. And then his only child, his daughter, just had a heart attack recently and had two minor strokes. She has to have some with her 24 hours a day. But folk, you don't always have good health. Don't abuse it. And I wouldn't accuse my brother of, <laughs> uh, of abusing his health. But they're family. And we're blessed to have families. I know some folk that don't have any family. And that's sad. We take our families for granted and we ought not do that. Because we don't get to keep them, do we? Our friends. They mean much to us. The psalmist King David had a friend called Jonathan, didn't he? And they said his love for him passed that of a love of a male for a female. They were true friends. Jonathan was willing to lay his life down for his friend, David, and he did. Even though Jonathan's dad tried to kill David, Jonathan stood with David. But folk, I want to tell you, God designed us to be healthy. Moses lived to be 120 years old. And the scripture says plainly that his natural forces were not abated. When God said, no, Moses has time, but he Take your nap. And God himself buried Moses. After he showed him all the things that he missed. But Moses enjoyed good health. I believe the Lord wants us to enjoy good health. We need to take care of, <laughs> of what we got, don't we? All right. Our material things are blessings, but they all come from him. David was that praise the Lord that he didn't have to steal to survive. And he said, Lord, don't give me too much. If you do, I'll deny you. You ever notice some of these people that win these lotteries? <laughs> they've never had anything before and all of a sudden they've got that money <laughs> and then it's gone. <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. But the psalmist said, Lord, don't make me have to steal to survive. Just give me enough. Some people, they never get enough, do they? 
All right. We've got a lot.